So why did Karl Marx have an issue with religion? Why do Marxists today have a problem with religion? The reason is because Marx saw religion as a distraction, as a crutch. Hence he once said, religion you know, is the opium of the people. But before I give you the reason behind this reason, we need to discuss something else first. And that is that any ideology that came into fruition after the Enlightenment, whether it's Marxism or capitalism, all of these ideologies are based on a fundamental tenet, an axiom, which was given to the world through the Enlightenment philosophers. And that, that axiom is that the purpose of human life, the objective of human beings, is to attain a utopia on earth, is to bring paradise to earth. It's all about material progress and prosperity. That's the fundamental idea. Hence, you would see Marx's ideas revolve around this fundamental axiom. His ideas specifically focus on the socio-economic standing of the human being, and he deals with the sort of tension and, and split between the elite and the, the, the lower class. And what, his, what, he, what, he, what he really wanted to do was to bring this balance where you know there was this equality from an economic perspective amongst human beings. And again, another sort of supporting assumption here is that you know humans what, what, what our primary concern is is money, essentially, our social standing and our economic standing in the world. And hence this balance has to be established. Now, understanding this, let's go back to the point where Marx, or let's go back to, the, to, to Marx's issues with religion and why he saw religion as a distraction. The reason is because religion blows this fundamental axiom that we're discussing completely out of the water. Religion, in particular Islam, highlights to us that our objective, our goal, our purpose is not this world. This world isn't an end in and of itself, but it's a means to the hereafter. It's a springboard to the hereafter. So we're not here just to make the most of this world and to ensure that we have really good lives from a material, you know, a social and economic perspective. These are all means and tools within this world. Our ultimate objective, according to Islam, is worshipping God. God created us to know Him and to worship Him. And this world is a means to achieve this. And we are also here to act and to do good and to live upright lives so we can attain paradise. Now, what this idea does is it completely undermines Marxism and any other such ideology. Because no longer is a human being that follows religion, in particular Islam, concerned, overly concerned with their social or economic standing. If they have little, they find ways of being content and still being grateful. And they still find comfort and peace and tranquility in that situation because they see that this is just this is just a, a temporary abode we're not here forever so this situation won't last forever and my objective isn't making as much money as i can my objective is to know my creator and to worship him and what this does is this removes the this essential aspect of motivation that's required for marxism to work because there's no motivation to change your state your, your, your worldly state, well, then you're not going to act. And if you don't act, well, you're not going to be able to change the system. That revolution that's intended is not going to take place. Hence, Marx, I believe, really, you know, for him, because of, the, because of this primary reason, religion was a big problem. It was a distraction. It was a crutch. And just to conclude, something I want to share about Islam, because Marxists, as well as others, would see you know, Islam or any other religion as just backward ideas of the past that have no significance to us today, it's in a similar vein to the way the Enlightenment philosophers thought of religion. But what people unfortunately don't realize and, and discover about Islam is that Islam is an extremely comprehensive system. Islam doesn't tell you to therefore become a monk just because you acknowledge Islam, that you go into a cave and you're not concerned at all about you know, money or you know, your social standing or, or any of these things. No, Islam is very balanced from this perspective. Islam tells us, work in this world, attain a living, you know, try to make your lives as good as you can in this world, but at the same time be grateful to God. Thank God for the good that you have. If you have a lot, then share it with the poor. It has its own unique 
profound, a, a beautiful system that's in place. It also encourages you to engage in the sciences, to engage in, in, in discovering new things and learning new things and making the lives of others better as well. So Islam isn't against progress, you know, this idea of progress. If anything, I mean, it's very interesting. Most people probably don't know this. I recently discovered this, that even the, many, many of the Enlightenment philosophers were really inspired by Islam, in particular the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And they actually wrote about him as well. But this is a topic for another video. But the point being, Islam is not against progress. All, but what it does is that it facilitates progress in the right way. It grounds the idea of progress. You know, it gives it that ethical and existential dimension that's required. Which you cannot achieve in the absence of God or in the absence of religion. Because as soon as you remove God and religion, well, then you have nothing to ground ethics and morality in. You have nothing to you know, ground anything in from that perspective. And this is why I encourage people to really look into Islam. Because I really believe Islam is the way forward for humanity. From an existential perspective, a social perspective, every perspective. But people really need to start to look into Islam and see what Islam has to say. And what answers Islam has for us today. Because we know Marxism has failed. You know, capitalism is struggling in many ways. And all of these other ideologies, they come and go. Because they, their foundations are weak. Their foundations are false. Anyway, I'll leave you guys with this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Till next time, take care.